So welcome back to Chip Chat. I'm your host Mehavani Shivakumar and I'm with the founder and CEO of Maven Silicon, Mr. Shivakumar. So in our previous episodes we spoke about how a smartphone works. In today's episode we're going to talk about an equally powerful if not more powerful tool and we're going to talk about the powerful fusion between BLSI and a laptop. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first question. So my first question for you is Mr. Shivakumar, what are the components involved in the making of a laptop and how do you exactly make a laptop? Good question. Laptop is very different from smartphone. In the last episode I explained how basically we make smartphones. We prefer a RISC processor primarily for smartphone, but when it comes to laptop we prefer CISC complex instruction set computer but how we use this processor that's what you need to understand so we use motherboard to connect cpu with all other components when it comes to laptop we use motherboard motherboard is the main hardware component if you look at motherboard you find various things like cpu socket that's how you plug in your cpu and then cpu will be connected with other components on the motherboard so cpu socket will be there chipset will be there chipset is the bridge that connects cpu with uh, pci slots and other ports ports like ethernet port usb port or audio ports hdmi ports so chipset is the bridge and based on chipset we classify the motherboard like whether it's for intel or amd if the chipset is intel chipset then you can think of using intel processor if the chipset is amd chipset then you can think of using amd processor so we classify the motherboard like whether it's for intel whether it's for amd simple now what is pcie slot if you want to connect additional hardware components with the motherboard then you can think of using pcie slots in addition to pcie slots you also find ram slots ram is primarily for uh, a memory it's called random access memory that's very different from storage memory that's how you can visualize motherboard cpu is the important thing when you run software everything is going to happen through operating system so software the application program plus operating system everything will be executed by cpu it's called central processing unit we use cisc complex instruction set computer for that in case of intel it is x86 in addition to cpu we also use gpu gpu is nothing but graphics processing unit it has parallel architecture it's very different from cpu cpu is good for executing software algorithms but gpu is good for executing computer graphics applications so it has parallel architecture and it's very efficient at image processing so we use cpu we use gpu there are slots you can insert gpus also on the motherboard in addition to the processor you also need to understand memory when it comes to memory there is a hierarchy of memory various kinds of memories cpu itself has registers registers are made up of flip flops then the next level would be cache we use sram to realize cache static memories then the next level is ram random access memory for that we prefer dynamic ram drams the best example would be lpddr and then the next level would be storage memory so everything will be stored in the storage memory something like hard disk operating system all the application programs everything is stored in terms of binary then the operating system loads the application programs into random access memory and then when it comes to executing the binary basically the processor is going to execute everything in terms of processor instructions that's what i explained in my last episode so during the execution the processor is going to fetch all the instructions from the register so the processor itself as built in registers but to increase the performance what we do is we also load certain important things into cache so the processor is going to fetch the information directly from the cache instead of going all the way to random access memory so from ram certain important things will be loaded into cache and then from cache the instructions will be loaded into registers and then the processor executes everything through registers this is how basically the execution happens so 
memory is one of the important things that you need to understand when it comes to realizing laptop. So what I explain how we approach motherboard design when it comes to motherboard you find CPU central processing unit and you find chipset chipset is the bridge that connects CPU with PCIe slots and the ports like USB port, Ethernet, audio interfaces, HDMI. In addition to chipset, you also find additional PCIe slots and RAM slots. The RAM is directly connected with processor mostly. This is how you can visualize the motherboard. Based on the chipset, basically we classify the motherboard into Intel motherboard or AMD motherboard. That's how we realize laptop. So you were explaining how execution takes place in the processor. So now I'm intrigued to know how does a laptop work? Apart from its components, how does it work? Right. See what I explained pretty much the hardware side. But if you want to realize the system, you need both hardware and software. Now you are asking me this question. How the laptop works then what you need is software you need to understand how we execute software on the motherboard so i explain everything about motherboard various things cpu chipset and pca slots all the hardware components right but you can't use hardware just like that you need software that's how basically you are going to interface with the hardware hardware is nothing but the laptop laptop is machine but if you want to use the machine you need interface that's where you need to understand the software side when I say software, it has three important things. One is operating system. The other one is device drivers. The other one is communication protocol stack. This is how you can visualize the software. What is operating system? Operating system is nothing but system software. It provides interface between application program and hardware. When it comes to PC or laptop, there would be different kinds of applications. Browser could be an application or Word, MS Word could be an application, MS Excel could be an application, right? So this is how you will be doing various things. You want to edit your CV, then you need MS Word application. Or you want to do some calculation, then you need calculator. Or you want to watch some movie on YouTube, then you need browser. It's different from smartphone. So this is how you will try different kinds of applications. Then operating system is the important thing. It provides interface between application program and hardware. How all these applications can interact with the hardware, that protocol is defined by operating system. And as a user, what do you want to do? You want to run multiple applications. You will not do something like, okay, now I am editing my resume, then let me close it and then I just want to open the browser then let me watch movie on YouTube. You won't do that right all things will be active and you will switch between applications that's how you will try to run applications in parallel that's taken care by operating system. How it can allocate the hardware resources what I explained on motherboard how all these hardware resources can be allocated to all these applications there will be processor it could be even multi-core processor but even then if you try to run let's say 10 applications or 20 applications then how all these applications will be executed by this processor multi-core processor that's taken care by operating system so operating system is very important thing it's called system software in addition to this what the hardware needs device drivers for example you would be using different hardware components like mouse keyboard and each hardware or peripheral components come along with software so device driver is nothing but software interface to the external hardware you are going to plug in mouse with the laptop you are going to plug in keyboard with the laptop so these are all external hardware components then the motherboard that is inside which is inside laptop needs to understand what is mouse, what is keyboard, who is the manufacturer, whether this uh, mouse is from Logitech. Then Logitech provides the software along with the mouse. So motherboard can interact with the mouse only through software. That's called device driver. In addition to this, what the laptop needs communication protocol stack. You also need facilities like Bluetooth and wireless connectivity, right? For such things, you also need software implementations. 
all these complex protocols can't be implemented completely like hardware. So there will be partition between hardware and software. Certain portions can be implemented as hardware. Certain portion can be implemented as software. Or in some cases, you can realize the whole thing as software itself if the CPU is going to be powerful. So you also need communication protocol stack. That's how you can visualize the software, right? With this complete arrangement, operating system plus device drivers plus communication protocol stack, you would be able to run any kind of application. Now, when it comes to device driver, I want to explain little more because that's what you need to understand for the laptop. Motherboard is very complex. So motherboard needs device driver for the hardware itself. In this case, we call this as firmware. To be very specific, I would say it's called as BIOS basic input output system what it does when you switch on your laptop this is the software that will be run initially so it's going to initiate everything it is going to perform post power on self-test so you have laptop you have mouse you have keyboard sometimes you may want to connect additional hardware components also external components like mouse devices like mouse so in that case, it does power on cell test. It checks all the hardware components on the motherboard. Okay, everything works fine. Then it loads the bootloader from the storage memory. In this case, hard disk. Then bootloader initializes the operating system and it loads the operating system into RAM and then the entire system will be ready. Then you would be able to run any kind of application. So BIOS is the one which initiates everything, which initiates everything on laptop. Basic input output system. That's how fundamentally laptop works. Right, right. You mentioned the term CISC. You said CISC is for computers. So how is a smartphone different from laptops in terms of software, hardware applications? How is a smartphone different from a laptop? Very good question. When it comes to smartphone, we use a risk. We prefer risk, reduced instruction set computer. What is the difference between risk and CISC? A risk is a lightweight processor. To be very precise, I can say the instructions of risk processors are very simple. If you consider CISC, the instruction is very complex. Each instruction is complex. That's how you can visualize. For example, you can do multiplication in one step on CISC. But when it comes to risk, you have to do multiplication in multiple steps. Sometimes it might not have direct instruction for multiplication. It might happen through addition. So to do one multiplication, risk processor will follow more than five steps. That's how you can visualize, right? The instruction is very simple. As the instruction is very simple, it doesn't consume much power. So risk is primarily for low power applications. In case of smartphone, what is the primary requirement? It should not consume so much power. If it is going to consume so much power, then you would end up charging your phone frequently. That should not happen. So we prefer risk. That is one big difference. Apart from using risk, what we do is we prefer system on a chip design approach. We cannot think of creating something like motherboard for smartphone because smartphone is very small. It has to be highly portable. It will have some kind of uh, motherboard, but it is not going to be bulky. It's not going to be huge. So in this case, we think of using system on a chip. Now you consider the motherboard that I explained. Everything is going to be there even for smartphone because it's equally powerful. You need processor, so you need CPU, you need GPU, you need image signal processor, you need USB port, you need Ethernet port, you need RAM, you need storage memory, everything. Apart from storage memory, what we do is we try to put all these components together within chip itself. So here, huge motherboard, but here we try to convert the entire motherboard into a chip and this is going to be system on a chip. That is the basic difference. Whatever I, I explain motherboard, in this case, what we do is we convert this entire motherboard into a chip, single chip. It's called system on a chip. So motherboard is going to be a chip. That's how we try to realize smartphone. That's why it consumes very low power. That's how smartphone is different from laptop. Very exciting to visualize. I want to understand how VLSI comes into picture? How does VLSI revolutionize the way we make laptops now? Good question. VLSI is needed for laptop, even uh, for smartphones, but 
how we use vlsi smartly to realize powerful devices like smartphone now you think about it we have to convert this entire motherboard into a single chip and there is only one way you can think of using very large scale integration that's how you can think of integrating all these components whatever you find on motherboard cpu all the ports gpus all these components will be like ips intellectual properties hardware components and then we integrate all these components and make a small chip for that you need vlsi also when it comes to realizing this kind of system on a chip you need powerful technologies if you consider iphone 14 there is a chip called a16 it has more than 14 billion transistors i explained it in the last episode right now you have to pack billions of transistors if you want to pack billions of transistors then you need powerful technology called fine nanometer in vlsi we classify chips based on technology so this a16 chip it's based on fine nanometer technology fabricated by tsmc this is how you can visualize like how we use vlsi to create complex system on a chip also what happens currently there's something very very interesting i want to share with you apple is actually trying to use even risc processor for laptops as a trend setter i would say all these years it has been like using cisc primarily for laptops that's how uh, we created various kinds of laptops and pcs but first time apple introduced how to use risc processor even for laptops also so what they have done is actually they have adopted smartphone design approach even for laptops so they introduced smartphone with that design experience they introduced powerful smartphones into the market and with that experience now what they are doing is why don't we use even smartphone chip for the laptop so what actually they are trying to do is actually they are trying to use a16 soc even for laptops also reverse way now they released a new series of chips like m1 series chips and m2 series chips they also provide a different uh, flavors of uh, macbook you would have heard about it macbook pro mac studio so what they do is they create a different versions of socs if you look at m series socs the complexity varies from 16 billion transistors to 100 billion transistors only thing what they do is they increase number of cpus and gpus but if you look at the combination it's very similar to soc subsystem a16 soc just look at this right it has cpus gpus image signal processor and display engine this subsystem is going to be there even in m series chip also what that means is they are adopting smartphone design approach even for laptops i can give this as a best example how we use vlsi to realize powerful laptops that's what i i want to share with you it's very very interesting to understand the realm where innovation converges with engineers you see and i think we've come to the end of today's episode and thank you so much for spending your time and explaining how a laptop works how it's different from a smartphone and if you're still curious then i would tell you to check out our instagram handles until then see you goodbye thank you thank you